Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Uh, well, today we want to have a brief look at the new Brave search engine. That's right, Brave is launching a new search engine. It is right now in beta. You can actually access it if you're running the Brave browser. I think you will have to update first, uh, but it will be an option to select when you uh, go to change your search settings, or you can use it at uh, I believe it's at search.brave.com. And so we're going to go ahead and have a look at this. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to start where we're going to jump over to a VM where I've just installed a very fresh Brave. We'll have a look at it. And then we're going to come back to the main computer where I was looking around at some of the things in Brave that I think we also need to bring up. So over here, this is the Linux Mint I did a couple of videos on just recently. I just installed a brand new, fresh version of Brave. And let's go ahead and search for something. And you can see that the default on Brave is still set to Google. Weird. Anyway, you can head on down to your settings in Brave and down to your search. And then you can pull this down and you can see that Brave Search Beta is now an option. So you just go ahead and do that. We'll pull up a new tab. Now let's search for something again. Now we're searching with the Brave function. And we'll talk a little bit about what the Brave function is going to be. So you can see it's giving us the very similar layout to Google. In fact, very similar results as Google. We have some YouTube videos to the Beatles. We have a little uh, side dash here. We have your primary. And uh, these are the uh, just the results that we get. Now, if you are using Brave Browser, then you can click over here and you have these setting options and you can change your theme settings. There's some language stuff coming. We can open links in new tab or not. I know some people love that. Some people hate that. I actually love that feature. So I would always turn that on. And then down here is the search, percent of search results from Brave Index. This kind of gets into what the Brave browser is doing. They're not based on one of the other browsers. So for example, DuckDuckGo is actually an anonymization port through the Bing search engine. And so if you are searching something on DuckDuckGo, you're actually getting Microsoft Bing search results through an anonymous, um, basically a de-anonymized shell. Start page does the same thing. You are getting the anonymized Google results. This is actually why start page gives you generally better results because Google is a better search engine as a whole than Bing is as far as giving you the good results. I, I always hate it when I have to jump over and search on something with Google, but if I've searched something to death, can't find the answer, jumping over to Google might just give me something. So that is what we are looking at in this block over here. So what happens is how many of your, your results independence means how many of the results came from Brave's own index. And what we mean by that is Brave has been working on developing an index, but if it can't find something, it will do an anonymous ping through other search engines. So probably Google, probably Bing, the other ones that they may not want to admit they're using, they don't even identify them in their notes. And then you can see that globally of all people, you can see that 87% of things searched came directly from this. Now this raises some question and that that is that the search engine is collecting some form of telemetry. And uh, we will have a brief look at that in a moment. But it is saying it's anonymous, it's tallied from all users, it's not tracked. Okay, that's, if we can, uh, maybe we can believe that, maybe we can't. Here's a little bit more about the search results in dependence. It will talk about how exactly everything is set here. And they mix things together just to find some of the, uh, some of the best results. And it doesn't look like they have told us exactly where they're getting from. They just say third parties. So I think maybe this is just kind of them trying to hold off on a little bit of criticism because frankly, Brave itself as a company, there is a lot to criticize there. This is why the Brave products themselves generally are very good, but I just don't trust the company behind it. That's my general take. So uh, with that, we're gonna go ahead and shut down the virtual machine. 
And then we're gonna jump on over and have a look at my main system here. And I'm actually just using my, um, I'm just using my old, 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 super out of date Water Fox. This computer will be updated soon. You can see I, I did a little search for switch to Linux and you can see the very first thing. Oh man, Lin uh, spelling it wrong, it gave me something else. Linux for noobs, man, this is beating me. It's Reddit, I guess Reddit can beat me. But there we have it. And uh, you can see um, you can see the the various results. Uh, I do not have the nice little thing over here to customize this. Now, go ahead and check your browser. It's possible that this browser is just too old. So it's very possible that uh, other people who go to search.brave.com might see those options in the side as well. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, DuckDuckGo does. And this browser is so stinking old that it, it it needs trash. I shouldn't be using it, but it is here for um, for a few interesting reasons. So that's why I wanted to have a look at it. So here's some information about what they're doing. So it's search without a trace. So it puts uh, you first, not big tech. We'll see down the road if this is really true or not. Um, so here's just basically, it, you can see it's done marketing stuff. They're they're a big, big tech money company, so that's it. How does Brave uh, Search stack up? They're just comparing themselves to Google and DuckDuckGo. They've left off start page, which I actually think is better of all of these right now. And uh, you can kind of see fully private and anonymous are calling DuckDuckGo that, even though DuckDuckGo uses AWS, and that is a big criticism of them. So is it fully, truly private and anonymous? Mm, I don't know, ask Bezos. Integrated with a private browser on desktop and mobile. So this is the fact that their their browser is put in. Of course, these charts are always lean towards the company that makes them because, you know, you word things in such a way to make them you look better than everybody else, you know. Uh, so you always take a chart that looks like this at, uh, at, you know, a little grain of salt there. So you can see here the FAQs, they talking a little bit about what it is and, and things like that. Now, what I wanted to do is I want to head on over to our, uh, our search page and I want to look at the code. And what I found looking at the code is down here at the bottom, there's where their JavaScript is. One of them is the telemetry bundle, which looks like this. Um, so I ran it through this unminifying script guy here, and here is what this script is unminified. I am not a JavaScript programmer. I will not be able to see exactly what is going on here nearly as much as other people. I'm gonna leave the pure analysis of what's going on in this thing to other people. But just based on the limited knowledge that I have, what it's doing, um, it does see, it does look like it's trying to set a cookie. Now I reset all my cookies on the browser and I did not see a cookie set. So I'm not sure if this is just setting it if you're using the Brave browser or um, I've messed something up. Uh, I think this browser is set to store cookies and logins and stuff. So uh, whatever that is worth. But it does appear as though it tries to set a cookie and then it will collect some basic information. I don't see anything in here about collecting the IP address. There is the date, the, uh, the, the basic time. Here's when you started connecting. So I can guess that this means when did you log in? Um, you know, when did you start? When did you stop? Uh, it's going to look at the duration. It's going to look at um, a few different other options here. And then some of the things that we see down here are some of the some of the things they're looking for. So daily, weekly, this refers to the general usage of search that communicates to Brave. Things like, I have been active this day or week. That's it. So in theory, they're saying we're only, were you active today or not? Were you active this week or not? And then... Sends a signal once every month indicating whether or not you have provided any feedback. So they're logging whether or not you are providing feedback. I don't know if this can tie back to you in any way, shape, or form. I don't know if they're collecting an IP address. They may, they may not be. It says this helps Brave learn how good or bad search is becoming over time. I don't, I don't know how. Uh, then the query count sends the total number of queries per day. How many times are you searching the Brave uh, with the Brave browser. This helps to learn how useful search is being to users, periods, um, you know. 
And then here's our daily. It will see if you're searching in search and images and news and videos. So it is actually collecting some data. And like I said, I'm going to leave it to somebody who knows a lot more about JavaScript to parse through this guy here and figure out exactly what it's doing and collecting. But they are indeed collecting some type of information inside of this search. So there is a little bit about the Brave search engine. I'm going to suspect it's going to be like the Brave browser in that the Brave browser itself as a product is pretty good in the world of web, um, uh, web search engines. And really, there's criticism among nearly all of them. I mean, Google, Bing, blah. Yeah, we don't even need to, to question how bad they are. They're just bad. It's just, it's just common knowledge. Start page does have the blemish that it is connected to, um, uh, uh, what is that company? System One. System One is a frightening, frightening, frightening company. It is why I will not use uh, why I will not recommend Waterfox anymore. Uh, it is still on this old computer, which is getting wiped soon in favor of a new build. Um, but I have not used Waterfox on any other system, and I don't recommend it because they are now owned by System One, and they have the scariest privacy policy. It makes Google and Microsoft's privacy policies look like a cakewalk. Now. They do not own Start Page. They do not have control over Start Page. Okay. They just invest in Start Page in exchange for utilizing their ad network on Start Page, which has layers of protection to make sure System One cannot grab any information. If I were in uh, Start Page's um, uh, boat, I would stop doing business with them. They are too shady of a company for a privacy-based search engine to do. But System One does not have any information, anything in Start Page servers as well. So I still recommend Start Page first. DuckDuckGo, I think it's okay. It has its questions about all being served and hosted on AWS. That does raise a lot of security and privacy concerns. Amazon is a company that works with DOD. It is a company that works regularly with police. Can we trust that whatever's in there is not going to be looked at by those other people. Probably not. For obviously reasons, we can't really trust Bing or Google, you know. So uh, when search engines are becoming like web browsers, there is no optimal one. You vote for the one you hate the least. And uh, where is Brave going to sit in this? Well, it's probably going to be up there with StartPage and DuckDuckGo and that the product is probably going to be good. Being independent is a positive thing. Uh, we need to see where it's hosted at, who has access to that information. But again, the company behind Brave, they raised all their money telling advertisers they were going to do things differently than they actually implemented. And then they turn around and tell us and the public that they want to be this big privacy-focused company. That was not in any way what they used to talk to the venture capitalists to raise money on their project. And so the fact that in their earlier editions, they did have... Uh, they did have uh, session replay tied into the browser itself in the code, which this is the thing that logs every bit of telemetry and sends it back to the company. It raises some serious concerns. But that being said, Brave Browser has stood up indeed to a test of time to say, at least for now, it does appear to be a good browser. And so the search engine likely is going to be in that same boat. I would not have any quibbles about using it. I would like a little bit more explanation about what's going on with this telemetry code. And is this something you can completely opt out of? Those are the things, the concerns that I have with it. But overall, the search results seem okay. I poked around with it a little bit. No big deal. Um, if you have Brave installed, it will not, at least as of yet in the beta, it will not reset your browser. I actually tested that by updating my Arch system. I usually do it on Saturdays, but I updated it today uh, as I'm recording this on Friday just to see if the Brave browser is going to force that in. I found that it was a, now an option to use, but it's not something that it automatically changes you to. So there you have it. Um, if you are on the Brave browser, you can set it as your default. If you are not on the Brave browser, search.brave.com. Try it out yourself. See what you think. And for sure, uh, provide the company with some feedback. It is a public beta, and that is how software gets better over time. So there are my thoughts on the Brave search engine. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.
Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash t-o-m-m or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.